Hey there, beekeepers. This is the fourth video in a four-part series where we talk about how to get started in beekeeping. In this video, we're going to talk about the tools that you want as a beginning beekeeper and some of the tools that you don't need when you're getting started and maybe some tools that you should stay away from until you get a little more experience. And we are going to talk about that in just a moment. Hi, I'm Scott McPherson, and this is Beekeeping from Scratch, where it's about the bees. Welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name is Scott McPherson, and this is my channel, Beekeeping from Scratch. And I'm a veteran beekeeper who is starting over from scratch. If you want to learn more about why I'm starting over from scratch, please take a look at this video I'm linking to above up here. All right, so let's get this video started right now. As a beginning beekeeper, there are a few tools that you might want to have in your kit that'll help you as a beekeeper. The first of those tools that we probably ought to talk about is the hive tool. The hive tool at its simplest is a thin pry bar and scraper. You use it to pry apart parts of your beehive that the bees might have glued together or scrape off excessive propolis and beeswax that might have built up and is in your way. The traditional version, which I'm showing up here, can be bought at bee supply stores, but recently I've found it in Lowe's and Home Depot as well. There's really nothing very special about it, and I think the tool has just come into wide use in various crafts and in construction. It's really no different than the heavier pry bars that you've always been able to get at Home Depot. Alternatively, you can use a painter's seven-in-one tool as a hive tool. I used one for many years, but the hive tool has come down in price so much that the painter's seven-in-one tool or the traditional hive tool, either one costs about the same and they perform mostly the same function. But now there's a third hive tool, which I'm gonna show up here, which is like the traditional hive tool, but it's got a bit of a hook on the end of it that helps you kind of get in under the edges of frames and give them a little prize. But listen, let me tell you something. You want to be careful. You really don't want to be prying apart pieces of your beehive that have been glued together by the bees. It's probably better to figure out why that frame has gotten stuck in there rather than trying to pry it out. But sometimes you just need a little bit of extra force and the hive tool will help get you there. All right, the second piece of equipment we probably want to talk about is the smoker. The smoker is used to calm your bees and it works through two mechanisms. The first one is that it masks smells. When you open up your beehive, bees immediately start sharing alarm pheromone with one another. The second mechanism is the bees will start to prepare to leave in case that smoke means that there is a fire coming. That means they start loading up a little with a little bit of honey, and as the bees get laden with honey, it makes it a little harder for them to sting you and makes them less aggressive. One of the best ways that you can use a smoker is to actually cover your hands and arms with smoke so that when you stick your hands in the hive, they don't smell you, and if any alarm pheromone gets sprayed on you, go ahead and smoke that little area again. It'll cover up the smell and hopefully keep the bees manageable. When you do use the smoker directly on the bees, you want to make sure that the smoke is nice and cool because you really don't want to burn the bees. And it's probably going to cause the bees to become more defensive much more quickly. And as they say, a little smoke is more than a lot. Too much smoke and you drive the bees right out of the hive and into the air, which is where you don't want them. The third piece of equipment, which although is not listed as essential beekeeping equipment, I think is essential to have, and that's a queen clip. The bee clip is a temporary cage where you could place the queen while you're working colonies. There are two reasons to cage the queen while you're working the colony. Either you just want to know where she is so that you don't lose her in the grass or accidentally move her someplace else, or you do want to catch the queen and you do want to move her. It's always a good idea to have a queen clip or two while you're working hive, and if you want to put the queen in a real queen cage, it's probably a good idea to have a few queen cages on you as well. All right, now the fourth piece of equipment we should probably talk about is the bee brush. The bee brush is considered an essential piece of equipment, but I'm not so sure how essential it is. And in all honesty, if you don't know how to use the bee brush right, it's probably gonna make keeping bees a little more difficult for you. One, it gets sticky if you get it into the honey, and two, if you don't know how to use it right, it really pisses off the bees. There is no better way to piss off the bees than to brush them off the wrong way. I find it is a lot easier to just shake the bees off of a frame. Now, you might ask, well, how do you shake the bees off? And it just takes a little bit of practice, but what you need to understand is it needs to be sharp, okay? You hold the frame 
and you come down, you hold the frame and you come down and you go bounce it off the bottom. I'm not pushing down hard. I'm not trying to create velocity. But when I hit the bottom, I'm coming up fast so that the bees fall off of the frame. Just like that. That'll get off 99% of the bees off the frame in the first shake. And if you have any more difficulty, just do it again. I don't like using brushes. I don't have any brushes in my operation. All right, so the next piece of equipment we're gonna talk about is the frame gripper. The frame gripper is most often used when you are wearing bee gloves, because when you have gloves, you can't really get a good feel of when you have a good grip on the top bar of a frame that you're pulling out of the hive. And the first frame gives the most resistance when you're trying to get it up out of the hive. What the gripper does is it's a tool that allows you to grab the top bar mechanically with a tool that you could visibly see has got a good grip on the frame and allow you to pull it straight up. And if you need to use a little bit of force, it gives you the opportunity to use a little bit of force. However, as we said before, it's probably better that you figure out why it's stuck first. All right, so the last two pieces of equipment we're gonna talk about is the frame holder, which allows you to hang frames on the outside of the hive so that you're not placing the frames down on the ground. And the other one is the quiet box, which is also another place for you to put frames while you're working the hive. And I learned about the quiet box from an old beekeeper named Billy Davis. Billy Davis uses the quiet box by taking frames while he's working a hive and putting them aside and covering them up to keep the bees calm and quiet. This reduced the amount of smoke that he had to use and reduced how defensive the bees got as he was working each colony. I'm linking to Billy Davis' video up here so you can learn how to build and use the quiet box. I really recommend that it's a tool that you add to your arsenal for working nice gentle bees. All right, I want to get a little more up close and personal talk about this last piece of equipment, and that's honey extractors. In all honesty, in your first year, you probably don't need an extractor. And if by some chance you find that you do have frames of honey that you need to extract, you've got a couple of options without buying an extractor. One, you can go to your local club, which you're probably and should be a member of, and seeing if they have extractors to borrow or to rent. Alternatively, you can get honey out of a frame without using an extractor and without destroying the entire comb. The most important part of the comb is that central midrib. It's the thickest piece of wax in the comb. It's the structure that holds the comb together. If you can scrape the honey, and what I mean by scrape is take just like a spoon and just carefully scrape the cells of the honey off of the midrib, turn it over and do the same. You can just scrape that, you could just scrape that honey into a colander and let the honey drip out of the wax overnight. You won't get as much wax as you think. It's a little bit more than just the honey cappings. Again, most of the wax is found in the midrib of the comb. And that's the most important part for the bees too. If you go ahead and take that frame and put it back into the hive, they're going to have almost as much utility out of that frame as if you had used an extractor to pull the honey out. What I would do is I would save your dollars to buy an extractor later. And I do plan on having another video to talk about extractors and which ones you should and shouldn't buy. I'll give you, I'll give you a hint here. Don't buy the two frame extractors, but I'll get into why in that video. Guys, if you found this video valuable, please hit like below and don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell icon so that you can be notified the very next time we upload another video. The mid -rib, which is the, the thickest and most... Where we, where we talk about and walk with it through you. Where we walk... Where, it'll, cover, it'll cover up the smell. It'll... It'll cover up the smell and hopefully keep the bees. It'll cover up the smell and hopefully keep the bees quickly rot and, 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 and with a gripper with the gripper what the gripper does is it's a tool that allows you to grab the top bar. Yeah, forget that. Scratch. Okay, the fourth piece of equipment that you Okay, the oh alright, so now